Teddy Roosevelt was kind of a badass, and because this is the Whiskey Tribe, we want to figure out what is the most cheers-worthy spirit to acknowledge the legacy of Teddy Roosevelt and steal a few things that you can use in your own life today. All right, Andrew Hayden, how would you describe the person that is Theodore Roosevelt? A cartoon character that happened to become president. <laughs> yeah. I think Teddy Roosevelt is such a colorful figure that yeah. we are at the, the last part of history that will be able to read about him and believe he actually existed. This human being did the things that probably is more impressive than like 10 average lifetimes combined. Yeah, I, I started reading about him and I was like, even if I don't become president, I don't think I'm gonna kick, uh, hold a stick to the amount of stuff he got done. I think right out of the gate I've cracked the code. Uh -huh. I understand the secret weapon that he had to facilitate all of this amazing activity, these accomplishments, this whirlwind of a life. Moonshine? Coffee. Oh, good, thank God. <laughs> it's like, I'm still recovering from the Churchill video. Oh, Christ. Come find me. <laughs> I'll fight all of you. Oh, this is mine. We're not sharing this. Oh, no. Fun fact, yeah. uh, I literally get paranoid if I drink more than about 400 milligrams of coffee. This would be... This is heart attack level. Uh, this is heart attack level. Supposedly, according to those around him, he drank up to a gallon of coffee, is what his friends and family would describe it as. I do wonder, though, how what the strength of the coffee was. They would describe it as so strong that... That it could float a bullet? <laughs> <laughs> Your mustache is growing thicker. <laughs> yes, nice. I just sprouted a third testicle. <laughs> I have a blood pressure cuff in my car. We can check my blood pressure now and after to see if I should be hospitalized. <laughs> Andrew, I can think of no more glorious machine to carry you around this planet than this one right here. Thank you, it has a radio. <laughs> Don't say anything about an inflation, it'll, it'll jack up my pulse rate. I don't know why I'm getting grandpa energy from you right now. <laughs> oh, there it is, okay. 124 over 83. 124 over 83. Pulse of 66, that's not bad for a 40-year-old guy. Okay. Best nurse ever. Thank you. So you go to school around here? <laughs> it says here you got gonorrhea. Must be real thick if it's hitting the blood pressure machine. <laughs> Viscous. 147 over 99. Right. Pulse rate 76. I quite like how clean my fake truck is. <laughs> so it's incredibly strong coffee. All right, I'm taking it to the top. Now, nowadays, what presidents do is cocaine. But back then, before cocaine was readily available, you went with, yeah, caffeine. That was the cocaine of the 1900s. Well, how else are you going to get... Except for cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coca-Cola got sued by the FDA for false advertising when they took the cocaine out. Speaking of the FDA, it exists because of TR. Was that him? The food safety issues right, of the day. Yeah, he was yeah. the one that said, hey, maybe we shouldn't be eating gross and weird things. All right, all right. I got things to say. <laughs> I got things to say. This is you with cuff in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Judging by the dent we already made in this thing, I'm feeling pretty confident. I just feel like I need to put something in my hand right now. <laughs> I'm not even awake normally at this point in the morning. I'm gonna be fine. A baby's fist of caffeine making me want to just punch police horses in the <laughs> face. You looking at me, dip shit. I goddamn hate you. Okay, so getting shot in the chest. Uh -huh. I can't think of a more an appropriate anecdote to just quickly paint a picture for what Teddy Roosevelt was all about. The story goes, the legend goes, where he's giving a speech. William Jennings Bryan is a cock. I said it. Right, crowd? Yes! That's right. Ah. Get shot in the chest. And that's why you should vote for me, Theodore something Roosevelt. Ow! Because ladies and gentlemen, I don't think you realize what's happened. I've just been shot in the chest. And then proceeds to give a 90-minute speech. We're going to live on! We're going to fight! Today is our Independence Day! Now I'm going to go not check a dire wolf. It's very grizzled. <laughs> He's a grizzled dude. No, absolutely. I think that that is like probably the number one story people know about Teddy Roosevelt yeah. is that he got shot in the chest and kept giving a speech. And it, the indication is that he is so manly, he can order his blood to stay in his body yeah. just through sheer force of will. It wasn't a pellet gun. This was an actual, yeah, yeah a yeah. handgun. Yeah, 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 I think it was a 38. Now, there's a few layers to this story. I don't want to take away from the fact that he had a bullet yeah. in his chest. He's bleeding. That actually happened. But 
he's a much more complicated man than just simplistic bravado. So the story, the way it actually un actually unfolds is, he wasn't giving the speech and he got shot in the chest. He was leaving the hotel on the way to go give a speech. Oh. Greeting people. The bullet actually goes through his steel eyeglass case, and he had a 50-page speech. It's yeah. just 50 pages folded over. 100 it, it, pages. Yes, 100 pages and a steel glasses case. And paper was more tough back then. <laughs> Back, Back when men were men, paper, paper was, was paper. So it goes through these things, but he's still freaking shot in the chest. Now here's the thing that I think a lot of people kind of miss about Teddy Roosevelt. This guy was a writer. He understood how to tell a story. He understood yeah. the important elements of legend and myth. What he did, once he got shot in the chest, coughed into his hand. Saw that he wasn't shot in the lung because there was no blood. Has the presence of mind I was like, you know what, if I can power through this shit and I can give this speech with a bullet in my chest, I have an amazing story to tell for the rest of my life. 90 minute speech. I don't know if I could do that. One, <laughs> I'm not good at branding. Right. Two, I don't like being shot. Three. It's an acquired taste. 90 minute speech, you better be paying me a lot. <laughs> like I usually do 20 to 25 minutes right. when I do it stand -up. I got 15 solid yeah. minutes and then it's a lot of crowd work. <laughs> I get thrown off by humidity. If I had a bullet lodged in my chest, I feel like that would like, yeah. I'd very likely take take a, a, a mulligan on that one. I don't want to take away from the fact that this wasn't talk. He did this shit. He just did it very on purpose. Yeah. The Battle of San Juan Hill, right? Everybody else in the Spanish, uh, you know, American War, they, they're, they're not on horseback because you gotta get low, you gotta, you know, make sure you, you make as small of a target as possible. He says, screw this, we got a hill to take. Hops on a horse with the Rough Riders, which are a very eclectic bunch yeah, of like yeah. Ivy League guys and Native Americans and like criminals like this, but they're kind of badasses. They know what they're doing. He rallies his guys, they go charging up a hill. It's because TR hopped on a horse and he's running back and forth, goading them to follow him up this hill because he was so conspicuous. Like, I'm on this horse, they could hit me way more easily than you guys. I will charge up this hill with you, being the biggest target. So he rallied the guys to charge up the hill while they're firing at him from an entrenched position. Teddy Roosevelt just kind of wants to go to war in general. He doesn't really care who it's with. The case can be made that he's a warmonger, but mm -hmm. not out of a craving of bloodlust. It's out of a craving where he wants to prove himself. In this capacity, I think that Teddy Roosevelt is the last of a very, very old school of thought. So like today, when we're debating foreign policy, mm -hmm. everybody agrees peace is the goal. The older school of thought was, if you're not going to war, your your boys will never become men mm -hmm. and your, your nation will become weak and effeminate and flabby. And so for thousands of years, war was just viewed as a good cardiovascular exercise for the nation as a whole. TR is the very last guy mm. that just sort of views war as makes a man out of people, war's inherently good, you need to have him every few years. That's so interesting because- I don't think that, by the way. <laughs> people generally know that Teddy Roosevelt had a very delicate childhood, he had, he had asthma. He was very sickly, it was borderline crippling asthma. He had stomach aches, severe headaches, like he was not healthy at all. Right. He was a big advocate for living the strenuous life because he came from this very sickly, pitiful beginning. He could have very easily used that beginning as an excuse, a limitation. And he decided the best way for me to get out of this weakness is to constantly push my limits. He would do things like point to point hiking where we will choose a spot on the horizon and we're going to go in a straight line. And no matter what's in front of us, we are not going to go around it. We're going to go we over scale it the boulder. or through it. Yeah. Mm. I see a robustness and a, a thirst, a craving hunger for a life well lived at all costs. He maintains that his whole life. So like he's the youngest president we've had he's thus 42, far. 42, and, yeah. and, uh, and so he's still relatively young when he concludes the presidency. He's still got another act to do. He goes to Africa for a while, kills a bunch of animals, sends them to the Smithsonian. No, or the it was, uh, it Natural was, History Museum in New York. It's 11,000 specimens. 11,000, yeah, that's yeah. a lot. You gotta wake up pretty early to kill 11,000 specimens. At one point, I think he's like in his early 50s, his doctor is just doing an annual physical and he's got a heart murmur and his, yeah. his doctor says like, just, you know, this is the point in your life where you need to take it easy, otherwise you're probably going to die by 60. He goes, well, I would rather die by 60 and live a full life than, yeah. you know, go quarter impulse power and make it to 72 and he does exactly that. I mean, yeah. World War I breaks out and he calls up Woodrow Wilson and goes, I would love to lead troops into France and Germany. He's a pretty, he's pretty old at this point, yeah. 
He's, well, he's, I mean, he's... I think he's in his 50s. Yeah, he's in his 50s, which is not that old for a general. The way he does war. Oh, yeah, because he would right. have been, like... You're the front line. He would have been, like, backflipping over the trenches <laughs> yes. and stuff. And, like, no, he's you know, not leading from the yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that was one of the things that he was most admired for. He would always, always lead from the front. I would like credit for how much coffee I'm drinking. And I feel like I'm reasonably calm. Am I super twitchy? I am twitchy as hell. You, you can are, tell. You are definitely <laughs> wired. <laughs> how are you keeping your energy so low key? Because I'm bouncing off the I, I don't know, because this is this is how much I've drank. I feel like I'm being pretty chill right now, right. and I, I feel like you're about to vibrate off your chair. Yeah, and I've drank less coffee than you. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a problem. Yeah. Once more into the breach. Right. Once more into the breach. You feeling good? I'm, it's, yeah. You yeah, this, yeah. That strenuous life? Yeah. Very vibrating inside. Very vibrating inside. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. Hello? Not saying I've ever done drugs. However, oh no, the acid kicked in real hard. I'm doing this for eight hours. This is a bit like that. Yeah. I just feel like I need to put something in my hand right now. Yeah. 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 I kind of want to do like push ups, but. Are some push ups? Yeah. Let's do some push ups. Okay. Thirty-nine. <laughs> what? <sighs> Forty. I've got that like twitchy virginal energy right now, and I worked real hard to get rid of that. This episode is sponsored by Helix. Helix. I'm gonna give you the con side of Helix's pro and con list. I'm ready. You ever have this idea that you're gonna hop in bed and uh, get your laptop and just get some stuff done? Yeah, you need to fall asleep. Yeah. Dude, okay, wait, this is a real thing. Since I got my Helix, yeah. my life has crumbled before my eyes. <laughs> Great mattresses, premium mattress customized to fit your needs conveniently shipped to your door. Dangerously too comfortable. I will get up and I, you know, monitor into the bathroom and then I'm brushing my teeth. I go back into bed and I brush my teeth from bed. This is a true story. The way that you go about getting the right Helix for you is they have a sleep quiz and they're gonna ask you a few questions like your, your size and I'll hook you up, man. Yeah, yeah, the height and all that stuff. And then it's gonna give some recommendations for you to get a Helix mattress shipped to your door. It's rolled up surprisingly small. And then this is where it gets exciting. Hold on, hold that thought. What do you need those for? Go ahead. You start to cut the little plastic that it's wrapped in, right? And then that's when the magic happens. So you know it's good quality because they have a 10 year warranty. They also have flexible financing options and they have a 100 night sleep trial so that you know what, you're gonna need a minute to make sure this is the best fit for you. If you wanna try out Helix for yourself, you're gonna go to helixsleep.com slash whiskey for up to 20% off your mattress. Plus two free pillows. All right, our first contender for a cheers worthy spirit, High West Campfire. Teddy Roosevelt was a man of action. He was known for his adventurous spirit, the, the leader of the Rough Riders, and a profound love of the American wilderness, which, if you love the wilderness, it's a well-named whiskey. A blend of straight rye whiskey, straight bourbon whiskey, and peated whiskey, making it a unique fusion of American and Scottish traditions. And throwing in the scotch, I think, is an elegant nod to his mother, who was of Scottish descent. And I think it's a bold, unconventional spirit for a bold, unconventional man. And that no-holds-barred approach, I mean, that's what it takes to do something like the Panama Canal, where you basically say, hey, let's make a giant channel, a canyon through the earth, 50 miles through the jungle and forever changed the world economy. Distillery, high west. On the nose, very heavily campfire smoke. You have toasted marshmallows, obviously that peat, vanilla and oak and light spices leading to a finish that blends the oak, sweet corn. It's 46% ABV, 92 proof. And it drinks rugged. An acquired taste, but so is TR. We brought in, uh, we brought in Gucci. Ah! Ah! 
That's what childhood Teddy sounded like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Humble beginnings. Let's get into the, the head of TR. I think it's three things. Yeah. I think that Teddy Roosevelt is deeply a romantic in every sense of the word. He has a view of the world of the primacy of the individual charging up a hill, right? Mm -hmm. It's not great forces of history, it's the man. And that's coupled with a deep insecurity and a lot of money. So he, he is um, overcompensating for being physically weak and delicate as a child. He idolizes his father. His father is the opposite of him growing up. Mm. He's like, falls in love with his first wife. He very intentionally targeted that girl. She had tons of suitors. Very smart, he figured out, I don't need to woo her. I just need to get everybody in her circle to love me. Her friends, her family, like her parents. I was a very clever, smart, intelligent man that is rarely combined with that physicality. And he, he was, was both. He was a voracious reader. Like yeah. from what I've read, he he was purported to read a book a day, mm -hmm. which um, I think after drinking an entire gallon of coffee, I would not be able to focus on the words. Yeah. I would develop dyslexia by, by virtue of vibration. A good way of looking at how he viewed knowledge, the influences that he allowed into his life, is he understood, in his own words, a stream can't rise larger than its source. He had a really deep wellspring to draw from and became a very, very effective human being. Regardless of whether or not you agreed with the things that he did, he was undeniably effective. Our other cheers were the option is Old Forester Statesman. Bold, spicy, oak, vanilla, dark fruit on the nose. Taste? chocolate, vanilla, tobacco, rounded out by warm oak. This whiskey was originally a stunt just to release and uh, help promote a film, but it was quickly acknowledged as something that was very worthwhile, and they kept making it well after the film had come and gone. And that sounds kind of familiar, that idea of bravado, but then also you look deeper and there's actually substance there. Teddy Roosevelt was not just an outdoor enthusiast and a conservationist. He won the Nobel Peace Prize for diplomacy, and he made significant contributions to the country's social fabric. Let's go a step further. This bourbon is selected from barrels located in the warmest places in the warehouse, believing to produce a more richer, robust whiskey due to the extreme temperatures. Uh, in other words, this whiskey lived one of TR's most cherished ideals, a strenuous life, and apparently it came out the better for it. Let's say my wife and mother die. Very, very bad situation. So his wife and his mother die on the same day. It's actually a Valentine's Day. It very understandably goes, this is overwhelming for me, and has, the, has enough money that he can go buy a ranch and, and learn to be a rancher and apparently gain the respect of, of people out west and things yeah. like that. He did recognize the need to step back, recharge, so you can throw yourself back into the fray. Um, and he did that in nature. I think it's like 230 million acres that he set aside for wilderness preserves and these beautiful spaces in America that they don't really have much of in other countries. Um, while I am not nearly as impressive as Teddy Roosevelt in any way, shape, or form, yeah. like, I am very, I'm a very active person, and I find that the only two times I can really fully relax are when I am on a sleeper train, which is tough to do in Texas, there aren't a lot of sleeper trains here, no. or when I'm camping. Mm. And so I go camping a lot, I really enjoy the outdoors, and part of the appeal to me is it's kind of difficult to give a shit about email when you're in the middle of a forest. Your sense of self becomes tiny, because it is a, a way to um, make yourself pleasantly small. America was economically just kicking ass, but when it came to like our military power, our, our ability to exert our will on the world stage, that hadn't been proven yet. So he uh, put together, um, it's called the Great White Fleet. Question. Hey, you know, no, is that hold on, all right. Is all right, that because ahead, the, David, David. the ships were white or yes. everybody was Caucasian? Well, <laughs> like was it like, cause this is old timey. They he did paint the ships white. Okay. Sailing around the world, they went around the planet. So it was a demonstration of speaking softly and carrying a big stick. There was no, you know, threat. But at the same time, look at this stick. And that did put America on another level on the world stage. Speaking of the armed forces, we have a ton of magnificent bastards in the Whiskey Tribe that have served or are currently serving in the military. We got letters, certificates of authenticity. You guys sent flags that were flown. Thank you. We're gonna display this very proudly, very prominently in the tasting room. I wanted to find the right episode to give a shout out. It's been much too long, but thank you very much. It's truly an honor. Mm.
The caffeine. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. I feel like I drank mine a little too fast. Should have paced myself. Yeah. Um, well, you are ahead of me. So this is what two thirds of a gallon over a two hour period. How is it, how is it affecting you? How are you feeling? Um, okay, it's not that I'm nauseous, but you know when you're about to throw up and you're like, uh oh. It manifests in me as agitation. Bringing it back to Theodore Roosevelt, if he pounded as much coffee as he was purported to do, I think this is probably a pretty significant player in his lifestyle, in his day-to-day -day activity, because I feel like I need to hurl myself into yeah. something. You need, to, you need to go do physical strenuous activity yeah, or you are yeah, going to yeah, just yeah. vomit. Can, okay, can I just say, yeah. day drinking is so much goddamn better yeah. than drinking excessive amounts of coffee. Like, <laughs> I, uh, there was a moment when we had lunch mm. where I we walked- looked, We looked at each other. We looked at each other and I'm like, I goddamn hate you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I also don't like Alex and that Dog. Why is it that I dislike everybody? And the immediate answer was because they're fucking awful. And then I was like, or it could be that I've drank half a gallon of coffee that is 1.3 times stronger than regular. A baby's fist of caffeine is coursing <laughs> through my veins right now, making me want to just punch police horses in the face. <laughs> Before we started filming, we're sitting here and Rex just goes, I hate wind chimes. <laughs> Adam, no, well, I mean, it was making noise. Of all the things to hate in the world, wind chimes was suddenly on the list. Yeah, we muzzled the wind chimes. Yeah. We had to. Yeah. This is the whole claim that a gallon of coffee, I'm a little suspicious that this is an accurate claim. It wouldn't have been funny if uh, Teddy Roosevelt would have actually been a limp-wristed hippie for his time <laughs> if it worked for the black yeah, coffee. But he just had so much caffeine in him that he was bear hunting all the time. We talked about you know the, his accomplishments. We talked about his, his influence, his worldview. I uh, think in a lot of ways he was a great man. And I think as long as we're not applying modern sensibilities into like the early 1900s, a lot of us living today can take a tremendous amount of life lessons from a person like Teddy Roosevelt, even if we're coming from a place of limitations and struggle, which is one of the things I think most people are frustrated by in their own life. They don't do the thing. Hmm. And Teddy Roosevelt, say what you will, he did the thing. The man in the arena. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, and who errs, and who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error or shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spins himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. I think these whiskeys are very, very suitable candidates for the life of TR, but I think the obvious tribute, once more to the breach, to the strenuous life. We did a dent. Yeah. Respectable. As we checked the blood pressure, Andrew and I, we started a podcast. What's the name of the podcast? Would You Touch It? Yep. Would You Touch It? We have several episodes that are going to be coming out. Um, you can see the first one right now. There's a link down in the description below. As we're getting our reading for what I'm sure will be a very reasonable and healthy result. Uh -huh. The Would You Touch It podcast. How would you best describe the podcast that we're doing together? Two very funny men sit at a desk and there's a button in between them. And one of them, usually Rex, goes, if you touch this button, X happens. Maybe everybody switches genders. Maybe everybody can fly or no one sleeps again. It's a good conversation starter podcast. So it's fun for us, but also you can steal it for your life and your conversations or your key parties to make interesting conversation and just make yourself seem like a reconteur. Jesus Christ. One, uh, 177 over 113? Your pulse is 112. <laughs> 112. That's like jumping on a trampoline and he's just standing there. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. The Mormons were right. <laughs>